So I'm reporting to you guys from a remote island in the Gulf of Thailand where Heather and I are in the midst of an expedition. This is the second one uh, that we've come to this place for. And we are studying the social lives of reef fish. And that may strike you as very odd at first, but I'd like to explain a little bit more about why we do this. So the fish that we're studying are herbivorous fish, which means they eat primary producers, which in this case are algae. And these algae are uh, natural components of these coral reef ecosystems, but they can grow in such a high volume and become so abundant that they can become problematic for the reef. Because when these algae are in high abundance, they can kill coral. They can actually take over entire coral reefs. And with this algal takeover, we can lose many of the key ecosystem services that coral reefs provide to us. For example, if algae take over a reef, they allow bioerosion to happen much faster, and this can break down the three-dimensional structures of the corals themselves, which provide habitat for fish that we fish out and eat. They actually serve as the primary protein source for entire regions of people. Uh, but these growing rocks, corals, I like to call them growing rocks, they also keep storm surges from battering coastlines, like this lovely beach that I'm in uh, on here in the uh, remote island in the Gulf of Thailand, Copangan, uh, this beach is here because it's protected by a reef right offshore here, which we study. Um, and so this is a long way to say that these fish are really, really important. In our initial research, uh, actually in French Polynesia, uh, my colleagues and I did some work that suggests that these fish uh, not only pay attention to each other and respond to each other's social cues, but they respond in a very strong way and they appear to reinforce each other's eating behavior, their feeding behavior, how much algae they're able to eat. And this has a lot to do with, at least it seems to, has a lot to do with uh, the perception of safety in numbers. Um, since if you surround yourself by other fish that have the same predators, if any of those other fish see a predator and swim away, you know a predator's coming, you can swim away faster, perhaps, perhaps get a, uh, have a boost in your likelihood of surviving an attack. And generally speaking, more fish around you, any one of them can take one, take one for the team if a predator actually does attack. Um, so these are good reasons for why fish ought to be paying attention to each other and maybe sticking near one another. Um, but what's really remarkable about this is because these fish serve such a vital ecological function, social behavior in these fish isn't just cool to think about and study and relate to, but it could also be a critical component to the dynamics of these ecosystems. How these ecosystems respond over long time scales, and maybe most importantly, how they respond to disturbances. For example, uh, natural disturbances like big storms, which hit this coastline regularly, you guys hear me complaining about that regularly while we're out here, uh, turns the visibility of the water uh, to really low levels, which is unfortunate, uh, but can also damage a lot of corals, uh, and it can it can do other things uh, uh, that can be detrimental to the system. Other disturbances that are very prominent include overfishing, where we take out too many fish. Uh, and this, of course, can have a, an effect on the reef. Uh, but right now, our current models are built on the assumption that the fish don't actually affect one another. They're sort of behaving independently of one another. And our research on the social lives of fish suggests the opposite. They actually they do respond to one another. And because of this, we ought to be considering these responses in the mathematical models we use to decide how to manage these systems in a sustainable way. So this is sort of why we're doing this. It's, it's very exciting. I find the topic of the social lives of any non-human, and even humans, but certainly non-humans, super duper exciting, and it's cool. It's cutting edge, and you know we have the technology to do this when we couldn't have done it in the past. But far beyond that, and actually what has uh, rooted me in this line of questioning. What's motivated me to ask these kinds of research questions has to do with the broader implications of this work. Because we can't forget that these coral reefs are amazing to visit for a lot of you know Westerners like myself who don't have them in my backyard. But for the local ties here, uh, many of whom we are friends with now, they depend on these systems. They depend on them for tourism. They depend on them for fisheries. They're an essential component of the economy and the social structure here. So it's not just a beautiful scene, but it's an incredibly valuable, maybe immeasurably valuable scene. And it looks like understanding the social lives of fish may be important to understand how to preserve this incredibly valuable scene. I hope that helps a little bit to, for you to understand why we do what we do.